Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to talk about Grid Bag Layout Manager. In a previous video, we talked about a couple of uh, layout managers. So today we will talk about Grid Bag Layout Manager. So the Grid Bag Layout Manager is used to align components on your container. It can be a frame or a panel. Uh, in a vertical way, in a horizontal way, or, you know, using uh, the baselines. So the components on the container, when you use the grid bag layout, may not be of the same size. So each object may maintain a dynamic uh, rectangular grid of cells. And when we use the grid bag layout, there's also uh, something called the grid bag constraints, which is um, something very important that determines how you arrange your various components on the container. So with the help of a constraints object, we can arrange and display our components on the container. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually set the grid bag layout for your panel and for your frame as well. And uh, I'm going to give an example on how to actually use that. So my project structure is organized this way. I have the main class here where I am having the main method. And I also have a second class that I called grid bag layout demo. I'm going to make sure that this particular class extends the class JFrame. Okay. So it's going to inherit all the properties of this particular JFrame class. So I need to import the JFrame class like this. Then in my main class, I'm going to remove this. We will come back to the main class later on. So in this grid bag layout demo class, I'm going to create a constructor. So I will say public grid bag layout demo, and I will open my curly braces like this. So I'm going to create, I'm going to declare a grid bag layout. So I will say grid bag layout, and I'll simply call it layout, a new grid bag layout, like this and a semicolon. I'm having an error. Okay, I need to import the grid bag layout class. Now I don't have any error at all. I can set the layout for this particular frame. So I'm going to say this, that set layout, and I'm going to say layout, okay? Because layout is a grid bag layout object. So this line of code is going to make sure that this particular frame is having a layout of type grid bag layout. So after I've done that, I can now set the size of this frame. I'll say this, that set size. 800 for the width and 600 for the height. I can also set the default close operation. So JFrame that exit close. And then I will set visibility. So I'll say set visible to true. I can also choose to set the title of this particular frame. I will say set title. And I'll put a string here that would be grid bag layout. And let me close the double quotes. So the set layout here, layout here is making reference to this. So it's an object that is going to make sure that we are having the new grid bag layout here. So it's pretty much the same thing if I wrote new grid bag layout like this. So that it's pretty much the same thing. All right. So I'm going to say layout like this. Let me create some buttons. So I will say J button, ETN1, new j button and i'll call this button one i need to import the j button class i'll copy this line of code and paste it so this will be button two button two button three button three button four button four here button five and then button five so in the grid bag layout class there is something called the grid bag constraints so with these constraints, it gives you the possibility to actually determine the position or the alignment of your components on the frame. So that's why it's really important to have this uh, a grid bag constraint object in order to determine that. So we are going to declare 
that particular object here. So we say grid bag constraint and the name of that constraint object, we say GBC, new grid bag constraint. So I need to import the grid bag constraint like this. All right. So now let's add our buttons to the frame. So now if you want to add button one to the frame, for example, you say this, that add button one, and you need to precise the constraint, okay? So the name of the constraint object is GBC. We call it GBC here, and then semicolon. So let me show you what will happen. Let me remove the constraints. Uh, let us display our frame like this without the constraints. So what I will do is that I will come to my main class here. So I will say grid bag layout. I call this demo. And I will say, I'll call it GBL equal new grid bag layout. So let me run. Okay, now we can see the button one is showing on the screen. Okay, let me come back to my grid bag layout demo class. I can add another attribute here. So I'll say this that set location relative to null. So to make sure that the frame would appear at the center of the screen. And I'm also gonna add all my buttons. So here I will do BTN2, BTN3, BTN4, BTN5. Let me run. There you can see all my buttons are showing and they are all centered, okay? So they are showing one after the other. So that's it. So let me come back to the grid bag layout constraints, what I was explaining to you. So with the grid bag layout constraints, it allows you to actually determine the position of your particular uh, component, okay? So now how do you use that? So with this particular component, let's take the first button. For if you want to apply some constraints to that, let's say, for example, you want to determine its X axis position. So you have to write the name of the grid bag constraints. So we called it GBC that grid X like this. And then you pass an integer value that will determine the value for that x axis of your button so if you also want to determine the y axis of your button you do the same thing gbc grid y zero all right so you can do let us do for the second button as well so we will simply copy come and paste it here for the second button we will say one one like this if we run you see nothing would definitely nothing would happen okay because when we added these two buttons we didn't pass the constraint object so this is really really important you have to pass the constraint object so in this line of code we will simply say gbc because that's the constraint object that we declared here okay and for button two as well say gbc like this now when i come here and run you can see that button one has a different positioning and then button two is being overlapped by one of these buttons here okay so the reason why we added this constraints for the button two here is because if you just remove this and you apply the constraints for only button one and run you will see that button two will still not show. Why? Because button two would also take the constraints of button one. Okay. So it's important when you add the constraint for the first button, you have to overwrite that constraints for the next items. Here we say one, one like this. We will copy and paste here. We say we we'll overwrite it and say two here, two like this. Let us run and see what will happen. Okay, we will come here and say three, three, and here we'll say four and four. So when you run, nothing seems to show actually because we didn't add the constraints here. So we say GBC, GBC for grid bag constraints. GBC. Let's see what will happen when we run. When we are running, 
now you can see only button one is showing what is wrong with this so i guess the mistake is that we need to add this line of code right after adding the constraints like this so we are going to remove that from here we'll simply cut that paste it here for button three as well we will cut it paste it here for button four let's cut and paste so for button five let me put this like this and then we will add it directly so we will say four now when you run you can see how the buttons are showing okay so always make sure that when you add in your constraints like this the add method should follow immediate, immediately okay so we were uh, we were not being able to display correctly because we all the add methods for our GUI components were really you know down so we have to actually do it like this all right so one thing we can do is that we can add some more constraints for example we can say that we will add some uh, grid height so I'll say GBC grid height is equal five. Okay, when we run, we won't see any difference. Okay, you can see that all the buttons are now at the same level because when you say grid height here, by default, all these other components are also gonna have the grid height of five. So that's why they are showing like that. But you see that if I cut this and paste it at button two, so you will see button two will have a grid height of five and all the other remaining buttons would also have the grid height of five, but not the button one. Now you see button one is as a state where it was before and then button two, button three and button five are positioned you know, at the bottom here. So for the other buttons, we have to override. So in order to override the grid height here, all we have to do is to come and say that grid height for button three must be equal to one. We have to set the grid height for button five as well. Like this, now when we run, you can see how this is showing. Okay, so we can actually use the fill constraint to make sure that, for example, here button two would occupy five you know, pixels. So we have to say GBC that grid that uh, that field equal grid bag constraints that because here we are talking about uh, the height we will say vertical and then semicolon let me run now you see that button two has increased its um, its height okay because here we say that the height is five and then when you run, you can see that button two height has increased. What if we copy all this code and set it for button one? You will also see that you know button one has also increased its height. All right, simply copy this. Put it here. Nothing would actually happen because GBC grid height here is already here at grid Y four. Okay, so five would not definitely make anything. So we can also actually set the grid uh, width. So you can simply say GBC that grid width. And if you say five here, so you have to overwrite this for the other and say two here, but in three, you can say five, one and one. So now you can see that button one is actually increase its width. So that's how you can actually play around these constraints and all of that. So let me take you back to how our particular components were showing on the frame, okay? So I want to actually have a nice design on our frame. So I will change some few constraints here. As for button three, I will remove this grid height and I will also change the constraint for the axis X and Y. As for button four, this will be one here and one here as well. For button five, simply say two and two. I can also remove these constraints. Now when I run, so this is how the buttons are shown. What else can I add? 
So for button three, you say GBC at I part Y equal 20. And then now let me see what will happen. Now you can see how button three is shown and button four. So I will say GBC that fill equal grid bag layout. We get bag constraints horizontal. Let me say, okay, this is how it's looking like. For button five as well, we can add um, some grid width. Then we we'll say GBC that fill grid bag constraints that horizontal when you run. I am going to set its x to zero, its y to two. Now this is how it is showing. All right, guys, so that was it on how you can actually play around your grid bag layout manager. And uh, I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share and to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.